offense. Nice knock away low by Neil Punt, and ECU has it for the first time. Contrast already, Bob. You notice right away, uh, Virginia Commonwealth came out when they came out offense. ECU was in a half court man to man when it came back the other way. Matchup zone shown by the by, by the VCU Rams off the top. Something that Mac McCarthy's known for. And a whistle stops play inside. We've got a foul underneath against ECU. And Ireland picks up his first, the seven foot junior from the Netherlands. So Lamar Taylor will be getting it in. Immediately the Rams go inside and a travel. Luka Liptov with the steps. The ball, ball club starting Charles as cold as the weather here in Richmond tonight. <laughs> and, and that's pretty cold. You know, to, to come in here and see this, neither one of these ball clubs expected this kind of storm to happen. Altered ECU's travel plans came in here just today, as you mentioned at the top. And that's probably take a little bit of time for everyone to get comfortable. East Carolina's Brown attacks, had the shot blocked, and taken away inside by Treadwell. Good interior defense by Matt Treadwell. One of the good things that he provides for VCU, another shot blocker on the floor. But now teaming him with uh, LF Likolita. Those are two big towers down low. Graham. Looks for Jones, can't find him. Good to front by Hawkins. And pass too long and out of bounds. We mentioned that Kenyatta Brown is someone that could step it up in the absence of Joe Cease. Well, that first one got knocked away. Yeah, the first one knocked away. Matt Treadwell providing some good interior defense, number 11, but the ball is knocked away by Bo Jones, number one, the guard coming down from the top. And an illegal screen on East Carolina. It's going to go against Brandon Hawkins. Or check it, it's going to go on Van Ireland. It will be his second. And immediately, seven-footer Quincy Hall, the senior from Cleveland, North Carolina, comes into the game and to the bench, Van Ireland with two personals. One thing you notice right off the top, all of the tall guys, whether with Virginia Commonwealth or East Carolina, none of them has a lot of heft to them, Bob. I mean, you know, all of them are, are real tall guys, but none of them are real bulky. Hawkins with the pull-up three, and it rims home. Brandon Hawkins, sophomore from Morganton, North Carolina. Averages just under 10 a game in the Colonial. That opens the scoring. Taylor up top, in and out, and stays out. And the rebound to Kenyatta Brown. The Pirates with a win tonight would even their conference record at 4-4. Four and four. Nice shovel inside the punt. He kicks it back out to Hawkins. Look at Litoff with the rebound. Taylor. That goes to Graham. His jump shot is good. Good ball movement that time by VCU coming down court, finding Josh Graham, who drove it towards, towards the basket, found a little block there, stepped up and hit a short jumper. Travis Holcomb Fay is the ECU point guard, gives to Hall, and it's Quincy hitting a jump shot in the baseline. He's battled uh, through knee problems through his whole career, Charles, but boy, the young man's got some talent. Yes, he does, and that's exactly what I was getting ready to say. He's been injury plagued his whole career, hasn't played a lot of minutes this year, only has one start on the season so far, but him coming in this early, getting a shot off, and it went down, that can only help his confidence. Well, Kalitov reverses and scores underneath. The 6'10 junior from St. Petersburg, Russia, makes it 5-4 East Carolina. We came into this game expecting a real matchup at the guards, and so far the big guys want to let us know that they're around too, don't they? The best laid plans. Here's Holcomb Fay. Gets a high screen from Punt. Now they get inside. Hall, working baseline, quick step, recovers. Loose ball picked up by VCU. Here's Bo Jones going to work, controls the dribble in the corner. Back to Taylor, VCU sets it up. 5-4, ECU leading. Backdoor alley -oop. great lay-in by Treadwell. Nice set by Virginia Commonwealth. That was a set play. Lamar Taylor dribbled the ball to the left side, pulling the defense over there. A little back screen for Treadwell. Nice alley-oop over the top. 
punt inside to Holcomb Fay for the lay-in. That gives East Carolina the lead back at 7-6. Nice cut by Travis Holcomb Fay. That won't make Mac McCarthy very happy. A little guy getting in there that easily against his interior defense. From the wing, a three-pointer for Lamar Taylor. He was a terrific three-point shooter a year ago at 44%. This year it's dropped off to 34%. But that shot had to give him some confidence. Has given him some confidence, and he's been sick lately, Bob, been battling the flu and hasn't played real well the last four ball games, only shooting about 25%. But as you mentioned, last year he shot about 44% from three-point range. An excellent shooter. Maybe that'll get him off his nine. Okam Fay, all the rebound. Out of the corner, Kenyatta Brown hits side glass. BCU is running. The toss ahead. Moving in is Graham, and he scores and draws a foul. Josh Graham with four, and he'll go to the free throw line. The foul on Brandon Hawkins is his first. For BCU, Sean Hampton comes into the game. Scott Lilly is also in for BCU. This is the third different starting lineup that Mac McCarthy has used this year. So far, the Rams off to a quick start, 11-7. Talking with their sports information director, Mike May, he says that Coach McCarthy likes to shake up the lineup. This is Graham Manning Mafuka, likes to shake up the lineup after consecutive losses. So that's why we have a different lineup today. But in his career, he hasn't lost much, and the Rams lead by five. little guys come in here nervous, sometimes hurt. They can't tell you what's wrong. It's my job to earn their trust and let them know that it's going to be okay. Then I walk into a bank and I'm looking for the same thing. I want them to earn my trust. Now that this is a relationship, um, I should tell you, I have caller ID, <laughs> and you're a hanger-upper. I know this because every time you call, it saves your name and number. And that's okay. I mean, it means that you're thinking of me, and you're thinking of me a lot. Did you ring doorbells and run as a kid? Sprint caller ID. Get it for yourself. We'll even give you the display unit for free. Call 1-877-1-SOLUTION. The year is coming to an end and Multimedia Cable Vision is offering its best offer ever. One basic cable, just one dollar. Get it installed, just one dollar. And get Multimedia Cable Vision's rave-reviewed Critics Choice Premium Service, which includes all of our premium channels for only, you guessed it, just one dollar. It's that simple, just three bucks, and you're on your way to enjoying the ultimate entertainment right in your own home. Call now and take advantage of this fabulous year-end offer from Multimedia Cable Vision. Call your local Multimedia Cable Vision office and say you want the dollar for dollar now. We're back in Richmond where VCU leads East Carolina 12-7, 15-08 to go in our first half. LF Lika Litoff with a nice play inside. Hey, getting to the point guard, Lamar Taylor. Game ball inside, nice entry pass. Watch Lika Litoff with a drop step and getting on the inside of Quincy Hall. Something coaches tell you all the time, never give up the baseline. And Quincy Hall gave up the baseline, Lika Litoff with a nice spin move. Gets the ball inside for a game that we talked about in the top being about guards. If the big guys get active and get involved, that's an added dimension for either team that gains an advantage with, with one of them. Early shooting, East Carolina is 3 of 8 for 38%. DCU is at 5 of 6, and they lead it by 5. Hawkins works against Scott Lilly, now on the wing. Hall, back to Hawkins. VCU still in their matchup zone, and, and a lot of times it looks like a man-to-man, -man, Bob, but they do a lot of pointing and changing, and depending on where the cutters go, that changes their assignment. They're very fluid in it. It takes a lot of coaching, a lot of practice to play it well. Neil Punt with three on the shot clock puts it home. That makes it 12-9. And Punt made that shot in the face of some pretty tough VCU defense. And Mac McCarthy won't be upset because the defense was, pretty, was very good. And Punt just made a good shot. Hall got a piece of that one and knocked it out of bounds. Now, this is with the shot clock draining. And uh, you have to find it. That's when someone has to have awareness of the shot clock going down. And Neil Punt did receive the ball inside. Nice little turnaround baby hook. Dropped it in. 
The ball will belong to the Pirates. And Brandon Hawkins hit a three-pointer early. VCU leads it 12 to 9. Hawkins looking, finds Taylor. Looking inside for punt, and they find it. Hawkins, another three. Too long on this one. And the rebound to Scott Lilly of VCU. The fake, the whistle, the shot goes. It's going to count. Okosa got it to go, and he'll shoot a free throw. Reggie Okosa getting the ball in the in the lane, showing good body control as he came to a complete stop with, it, with, with, with his jump stop, and then being able to bounce off some bodies, get the ball up on the rim, has a chance for a three-point play. I thought at first he might have might have traveled here, Bob. Came inside, but he held his pivot foot very, very well. Got up off the glass, has a chance to make a three-point play. Quincy Hall with a foul. Okosa, sophomore from Delaware. Back iron and pump the rebound. Hale averages six and a half boards a game. 14-9 VCU. Pirates David Taylor. Out of punt. Inside branch. Oops, now they go to Taylor. He'll miss, and Lilly jumps in to get the rebound. Lily. Now Kojo with it in the corner. Lob in. Tough pass. And the Pirates are able to knock it out of bounds. Last touch by BCU. Travis Holcomb Faye comes back into the game for East Carolina. Hawkins gets a breather. Sitting next to assistant coach Richard Morgan. No stranger in Virginia after his great playing days with the Cavaliers in Charlottesville. He's quite a player, played in a lot of big games, and he played big in those games, Bob. What a great player Richard Morgan was. A steal inside by Kojo. VCU leading by five with the ball, 12.50 left first half. A lot of substitutions early for VCU. Some guys on the floor that haven't been getting as much playing time lately. Hunter Hoggett in the, in the game doesn't play all that much. Kojo back from injury. Wanted to get everyone in and active, I think, is Mac McCarthy's philosophy here in the ballgame. Hunt goes cross court to Holcomb Fay. Freshman point guard from Winston-Salem. Feeding to David Taylor. Now a steal. And the Rams are running. Scott Lilly on the wing. Loose ball, and it's going to belong to VCU with 29 seconds on the shot clock. Folks, you can get all the football news, highlights, and analysis that you can handle as we bring you in-depth pro college and high school pigskin coverage on Football News, weeknights at 6 p.m. on Fox Sportsnet. Lamar Taylor to get it in. Junior from John Marshall High School here in Richmond. He plays a lot of minutes for them, Bob. He averages almost 35 minutes a game. He doesn't come off the court very often. You notice that breather was short-lived for them. They, you know, without him on the floor balancing things and controlling the basketball, VCU really struggles in the half-court offense. Taylor misses the shot. Open Bay rebounds. Taylor leading the league in assists. Quick break. What a block. Tremendous block by Sean Hampton. It looked for all the world that David Taylor had a lay-in. Hampton with the block goes up, Hall blocks his shot. And East Carolina comes the other way. That was some play by Sean Hampton, because I was like you, but I thought that was an easy layup or a dunk by David Taylor, and Hampton came from half court and blocked it against the glass. Lamar Taylor with the foul. Sean Hampton was number five in the Colonial and block shots last year. And this sophomore from Baltimore with one for the VCU highlight reel. Time out for Richmond. I get here at 6 a.m. I got the machinery. I got bottles. I got to talk like this eight hours a day. <sighs> I get headaches. There's a reason Goodies works quickly to stop headaches. It's a powder, so it's like it's halfway to your headache before you even take it, to get rid of pain fast. I take Goodies. That headache is no deposit, no return. Goodies. It gets the job done. Your skills can get you on the squad. 
your coach can make you a starter. Your fans can make you hustle. Your team can give you hope. But when the moment comes, do you have what it takes to finish? Tonight on Fox Sports News, live from Super Bowl 34 in Atlanta. Things are heating up in chilly Atlanta as the Rams and Titans make their entrance, get reports from both teams. Plus, we'll have player interviews and analysis of Super Bowl 34. And a new pilot takes the controls in New York. Then we'll have an update on the condition of Derek Thomas. That's Fox Sports News from Atlanta tonight. Plus, catch our Super Bowl wrap-up show right after the game. Welcome back to the Alltel Pavilion where Virginia Commonwealth leads East Carolina by five with 11.33 to go in the first half. And one reason that, that uh, East Carolina is trying to stand, uh, that Virginia Commonwealth leads is the hustle that they've shown. Sean Hampton coming to block this shot by David Taylor who thought he had an easy layup. A lot of people talk about the dunk bob, you know, being too flashy, being a hot dog. Sometimes there's a place for it. If David Taylor goes to the rim and dunks that one or attempts to dunk it, Sean Hampton probably has to foul him and probably doesn't get away with a clean block. Pirates with the ball down by five. Hall oh, with a give and go inside. And guess what? David Taylor had another one blocked. Rams are running. And we have got an offensive foul. The charge coming against Bo Jones, his first. I think David Taylor is starting to feel a little snake bit here, Bob. Getting inside again. This time he has a chance at his block from the backside. I believe that was uh, Josh, Graham. Josh Graham who got down. Then Bo Jones, the new element to his game, going at the basket more rather than pulling up for the jump shot, cost, cost him an offensive foul in this sequence. Holcomb Fay took the charge and took some punishment to boot. Pirates attack and a sweet left-handed hook by Stephen Branch. Coming back off a reconstructed knee surgery, he looked good in the paint. Excellent job by him. You mentioned that you can see the big brace on him, number 14 for East Carolina. He was probably their best athlete last year on the team, had a lot of starts and a lot of minutes until he hurt his knee in January. He's still trying to work his way back into playing shape. And the Pirates are able to take another charge. Reggie Acosa, the guilty party, his first. For VCU, look, the leadoff is back in. And Akosa to the bench. Mild pressure by VCU as Holcomb Bay brings it up. Eight turnovers for the Rams. They lead it by three. I think Mac McCarthy wanted to extend the defense a little bit and make Holcomb Fay work a little bit harder. Nice block again. Matt Treadwell got that one. It triggers the fast break to Jones, and he's fouled on the drive. Garrett Blackwelder fouled him in transition. Two quick, two quick things. The VCU defense, they extended it to begin with. You, you know, putting a little more pressure on the point guard, but then down low, look at leadoff, and Matt Treadwell, again, forming an imposing wall down low. Leads to a breakout. Nice pass by Josh Graham. Getting the outlet pass to Bo Jones. This time, instead of a charge, Jones gets to the line to shoot two free throws. But my, my point, Bob, when you extend your defense with Lamar Taylor on, on Holcomb Fay, Holcomb Fay is just a freshman. And he has a two to one assist to turnover ratio. But I think Mac McCarthy wants to test that a little more with the more experienced defender in Lamar Taylor. He wants to see how long he can handle it. Kenyatta Brown comes back into the game for David Taylor. Bo Jones just got his first point tonight. He's the leading scorer in this ball club. Goes two for two at the line. And VCU with a five-point advantage. Neil Punt coming back in for ECU. And it is Stephen Branch to go out. 16-11 Rams. Ten and a half to go first half. Bob Rathbun, Charles Davis with you from Richmond, Virginia. Here's Punt moving deep into the paint. The fake, the fire, count the basket. And the foul on Likalito. Nice job by Neil Punt getting the ball down in deep. And once you get it that deep, it's real difficult to play defense. Even though Likalito's a tall guy, so is Neil Punt. But the thing that got him, the up fake. Got him off his feet, then came up under. Nice job by Neil Punt showing his experience and his, and his increased offense. He's really played well for them down low this year. 48% free throw shooter. 
Leaves it short, and Taylor jumps in to get 16-13, VCU. in front and keeping the ball away from Bo Jones. A bombing violation gives it back to ECU. One thing about Bill Harry and teams, they're always going to play defense. He, he really preaches it, believes in it. That's what, that's what his mantra is. And he knows the offense will come and go on a given day, but he figures the defense should be there all the time because that's mainly about effort. 16-13. Inside for punt, can't hit him. Back around it goes to Brown. Skip pass to Holcomb Fed. Shot clock at 15. Hall on the block. Goes up. Short tip. No over the rim. Hall again. No. Here's Hawkins. And Yada Brown pumps it inside. Punt goes up with the left hand. No good. Treadwell fouled on the rebound. Boy, a lot of frustration for ECU. They're getting the ball in deep, and they expect the score. Quincy Hall, one fake, two fakes. Looks like Matt Treadwell and LF look leadoff learned from the last time when Neil Punt got him off their feet. They stayed down, made Quincy Hall make a move, couldn't score the first time, missed the tip. He goes to the bench with a little bit of frustration. He's working awfully hard with not much to show for it on the scoring side. 16-13, VCU. Rams have it, Lamar Taylor, no good. Tipped to the corner and out of bounds goes Brown. Ball will belong to VCU. Scott Lilly returning to the Rams lineup and Lamar Taylor goes out. That last three by Lamar Taylor, that was a long three even for him. I mean, that was, I was out there beyond, that was about NBA distance on that one. And I'm not sure it came in the sequence in the offense and Mac McCarthy wanted to see that shot go up. Graham. Look at Lito from the block. Air balls it and the rebound to Holcomb Faye. Leads a three on three. Holcomb Faye to the bucket and it's knocked out of there by Graham. Jones has it on the run. Once again, the shot blocking capability of VCU triggers the running game. If you're Bo Jones, you're going to congratulate your guys at the next time out and tell them thank you very much down low because they are triggering the runouts for them. With the defense, as you mentioned, Bob, a couple of shot blocks, a couple of times they just intimidated ECU out of there. They're doing an excellent job on the interior. Hunt gets big, but good overplay by Treadwell to steal it. And even when they're not sh blocking shots, they're doing things like Matt Treadwell just did. Excellent defensive positioning, getting out on the uh, getting out on the opposite side to flick the ball away. Really good job by BCU's big players. But the lead top wasn't ready to catch it. It's a turnover. Time out on the floor in Richmond with 7.50 left in the first half. BCU by five. Pavilion. <laughs> in Richmond, Virginia, oh, VCU's yeah. home Gotta court as they take on the East Carolina Pirates. And really, it's been the VCU defense that's been the story of the first half. It's triggered everything for them. You see Holcomb Fay trying to get inside. Bo Jones held him a little, got away with it. And then there was a block from over the top, which led to the run out by Bo Jones on the opposite end. See him going to the basket. See these Carolina Pirate flash by him, hoping to startle him and cause a turnover. But he didn't foul him, which is a smart play because Bo Jones shoots 95% from the free throw line. Don't give up an easy three-point play when you don't have to. 18-13, VCU. Bob Rath and Charles Davis, happy to have you with us in Richmond tonight. On the wing, Hawkins now pressure in the corner. Taylor trapped in a travel. And again, the VCU defense. Excellent job. We've talked a lot about the block shots in the interior defense. This time, credit to number 13, Patrick Kojo, who came over and doubled. You know, David Taylor on that play, I think that surprised him. They haven't seen much doubling in the corner out of this matchup zone. He surprised him on that play and forced the turnover. Baseline drive off the high glass for Kojo. I have to say his back 
must be feeling a lot better. He missed four games with back spasms. His first game back was the last game that they played against George Mason, and he played 23 minutes that day, and those were unexpected minutes. He came to the shoot around and said, I feel pretty good, coach. I think I can go tonight. And Matt McCarthy needed the healthy body, put him right back into the lineup. And puck travels. Ball's down low, Neil Punt trying to get to the baseline. Couldn't quite stop the move. Good job down low by Sean Hampton. Remember earlier in the ball game, Quincy Hall from East Carolina gave up the baseline to LF lick, lick the lead off on a move. That time, they blocked it off. Sean Hampton blocked off the baseline. Neil Punt had nowhere to go, shuffle his feet for a travel. Goodly handles it up top for VCU. to use Brandon Hawkins. Taylor on the wing. If not a Morrissey. Back up top to Hawkins for three. Brandon Hawkins, second three tonight. And that pulls the Pirates within four. Brandon, Brandon Hawkins, not very shy about pumping up the three tonight, Bob. He's only made 29% for the season, but has not prevented him from taking them. He has a shooter's confidence when he puts the ball up. And we have a hell ball. The arrow will give it to ECU. Talked a lot about Virginia Commonwealth's defense. ECU trying to get into the action, too. Hunter Hoggett taking the ball at the top. See Brandon Hawkins making, matching it man for man. Fights over the screen and gets a hand up. Ball comes off the rim, and then Brandon Hawkins goes and runs it down. And oftentimes, good defensive play is rewarded. And in this case, it was. In the same sequence, Brandon Hawkins knocking down a three on the other end. So his defense led to his offense. And that's not an easy thing to do. When you duck under the screen and still have time enough to fight through and get a hand up, that's pretty good defense. Excellent defense by him because he, re he read the screen. Instead of fighting over it from the opposite side, he came underneath it, was still able to get a hand up, and that altered Hunter Hoggett's shot. 2016 VCU and a travel. We'll give it back to the Rams. This VCU club, in fact, both clubs have been very streaky this season. The Rams are two and three in the conference. They are coming off a loss to George Mason. Mike McCarthy's club blew through the preseason. Great wins over at Louisville, Colorado, and Pittsburgh. But they've stumbled in conference play, losing three out of five. Both of them almost like theme park roller coaster rides, Bob, up and down a lot throughout the season. Both of them looking for that consistency that will carry them towards the Colonial Athletic Association tournament. Josh Graham. Well, Lamar Taylor's going to get it in. 12 seconds. On the shot clock for VCU. They're off. I think Mac McCarthy's asking for a reset of the clock, but the ball just out of bounds, so 12 on the clock. 507 left in the first half. Here's Taylor. Rams have got to go quickly. Seven, six. Taylor penetrates. His runner is good. Taylor with five, 22-16. And it helps to have an experienced point guard in those situations where the shot clock's winding down. You don't have a lot of time to make a move. Here's a guy who can break down the defense and make it make something happen himself. Well aware of how much time was on that clock was Lamar Taylor. Graham steps in, picks off the pass. Out of Taylor. Spinning. Tip is going to bounce out no good. Quincy Hall the rebound. Gives to Hawkins. 22-16 Rams. And we've got a foul coming on VCU as Van Ireland back in the game makes his move. The foul will go against Sean Hampton, his first. And that's one of the few times recently that the whistle is blown on that end of the court and it hasn't been an ECU turnover. You know, they've turned the ball over a lot. They're not even getting shot attempts, which, you know, has got a heart. It, it, it makes Bill Herring upset, but at the same time looks at the scoreboard and says, we're not even getting shot attempts. We're only down a few points. So if we ever get it together and run our offense and get, get the attempts we want, we should be okay. Hall moves in, lays it in. Quincy Hall with his second bucket for four, and he's lifting a bit. 
as he comes back up to the courts. Pirates trailing by four, under four to go in the first half. Taylor, now a high post and a travel on takeoff by Reggie Ocosa. 22-18 VCU and a timeout on the floor. The senior from Cleveland, North Carolina, Quincy Hall with a 5 p.m. The South Carolina, and they've got the early lead on the Commodores. So welcome to the SEC. The battles have begun. South Carolina much improved over last year. Already have more wins for the season, I believe, than they did all of last year. And Tennessee, as you mentioned, a huge win at home against some people's preseason number one Auburn. Inside, Neil Punt scores. He's got six. This East Carolina club went into Columbia and beat the game Cox a year ago. They're trailing in Richmond tonight, 22-20, 3.25 to go in the first. See a lot of different guys on the floor for VCU that we probably haven't anticipated seeing as much of in the ball game so thus far, especially Hunter Hoggett. He's probably played more minutes in, in this ball game than he's played the last three or four combined. And so far, he's done a nice job for them. He's known as a long-range shooter, actually red-shirted last year, real gym rat, Bob. Loves the game so much, wanted to get himself bigger and stronger and increase his chances of playing. red shirt last year on his own, he added about 20 pounds of muscle in the weight room, and they say he's a much improved player. Here's Graham with a look inside, the turnaround by Hampton Short, and the rebound to David Taylor, the junior from Gastonia. Now the Pirates have a chance to tie with a two, take the lead with a three. Selected, picked up by Hawkins. This is the three, but the follow by Taylor rolls off the rim. Ramp looking to run, but a good takeaway by David Taylor. And he stepped over the line. That's a backcourt violation. Brandon Hawkins at the top. He's been, he's been firing away from the three-point from three-point range. Missed it. David Taylor, an easy putback. Doesn't get it to go. Poor guy's had a tough time tonight, but he never gives up on the play. He hustles, flicks the ball away, comes out to the mid-court line. He's bumped a little bit by Hunter Hagen, stepped over the back court line. It's called over and back by the official. Rams turn it over again. Here's Taylor. Hunt now to the corner. Pirates again with a chance to get this thing even. Blackwelder in that corner. They go inside to punt. Nice roll to the bucket. Virginia Commonwealth has done an excellent job all night on defense, and the matchup zone causes a lot of problems for people as you try and read it. I think what Bill Herrian has directed his team to do is just go ahead and attack it inside, trying to use the bigger guys and trying to simplify things rather than trying to read all the cuts. Just get it inside and let's pound it out of a little bit. Rams with a couple of wild ones, and now East Carolina comes out of there with it. Brandon Hawkins, the pull-up jet. Nice job by Brandon Hawkins with the pull-up jumper because that's almost a lost art, Bob. Most of the time, guys want to come down either shoot the three or they'll just take it all the way to the basket whether they have the drive or not. Being able to come down under control and, in bal and on balance and pull up and hit that shot. Nice job by Brandon Hawkins. ECU in front by two. Inside, Sean Hampton. Got back to the corner. Hunter Hoggett has it to Taylor. Leading assist man of the CAA. Takes it himself this time. Has it blocked from behind by Stephen Branch. Boy, a lot of blocks in this game for both clubs. Yeah, VCU came in number 16 in the country in blocks per game at 6-6 six, six per. Right now they have five or six already for the game. Forced shot by Blackwelder. And VCU is going to take a timeout with 56.6 seconds remaining. We're back in Richmond. This was during the timeout. Head coach uh, Bill Herring, shall we say, has had a running commentary <laughs> with the men in stripes tonight. New in the conference, making sure he gets introduced to all of the officials so they know who he is. Coach Herring really likes to work the officials. And, uh, li I, I likened him to Joe Harrington during his prime when he was at Long Beach State and at Colorado. Remember one time there was an article in the paper about how much Joe got on the officials, and somebody in the conference said, you know, they can't be wrong on every call, but Joe thinks they are. So <laughs> I'm not sure Bill Herring's at that level yet, but he, always, he wants to make sure the officials know that he's here to work, work hard every night. Jones misses. Speaking of Harrington, he comes to this league and George Mason. Did a great job in doing so. That led him, that led him down the road to his other job. Out to Long Beach State to Colorado. Now he's an assistant in the pros with the Toronto Raptors under Butch Carter, who actually was an assistant of his at Long Beach State. So you see how it goes around all the time. It's a, it's a big world, but a small circle. <laughs> 
Hawkins. And East Carolina is going to take a tour that's coming up tonight at 11.30 p.m. on Fox Sports Net. Jim Rome in Atlanta. <laughs> Rome can't said, get warm enough. He said, I'm all the assistants. Find as many as you can. I must be warm to do my show. 24-22 <laughs> East Carolina. Bill Harrion set up the final play. Let's see if the Bucks can execute it here. Hawkins. 10, 9. Hawkins spins, fires, misses. Rebound, Hampton. BCU's got a chance if they go quickly. Here's Lilly from midcourt at the buzzer, short. And the first half is history. East Carolina staggered early, but got their seat legs about them and came storming back, and they have taken a halftime lead. In Richmond over the VC Ram throughout the southeast that eastern seaboard with a real pelting of snow today. No different here in Richmond. They had a foot of snow, but we've got basketball. And here's Jones going to work in the second half. Put it up in an encounter. And I'm sure at the half, Mac McCarthy told him, Bo, we need your offense. We need you to pick up the pace a little bit. He tried to force it a few times in the first half, but just wasn't working. And right out of the half, we saw Mac McCarthy drawing up a play in the timeout. I think it was, Bo, go to the basket, make a basket, and get fouled. And it drew and it worked to perfection. Bo Jones averaging 18.3 a game, third best, and a terrific free throw short shooter. And what do you know? It leaves it short. Tied at 24. Here's Holcomb Fay going to work for East Carolina. Taylor right in his shirt and a double dribble. Yet another turnover. The 12th for East Carolina tonight. And I know both coaches preach to their team coming out of the locker room. The first five minutes of the half are key to us. One of us has to come out and seize the momentum and really come out and play well. And thus far, VCU seems to seems to have jumped out on, jumped out better at the end of the half than uh, East Carolina has. Taylor hits a three. Lamar Taylor with his second three-pointer of the proceedings tonight. He's got eight points. BCU leads by three. Hawkins trying to get the three back no, and into the hands of Lamar Taylor. He surveys, starts to drive, dishes low, and a trap. Likalitov not ready to receive the basketball. And that's frustrating if you're the point guard. If you're Lamar Taylor, you've made the move. You taught, you said it a second ago, he surveyed the floor, found the best option, which was LF Likalitov, who was open for the shot, wasn't ready to receive the pass. With a point guard like, such as Lamar Taylor, you need to always be ready to receive the pass. He will find you if you're open. 27-24 Rams. And a bad pass intercepted by VCU. Here's Lamar Taylor on the break to Graham, and that's going to be a blocking foul. Count the basket. Stephen Hol hey, Holcomb Fay here, Travis Holcomb Fay, who's been a, done a good job taking care of the basketball as a freshman guard. This time thinks Alphonse Van Eerland and he are on the same page. They're not. Van Eerland's going to set a screen. Holcomb Fay passes the ball to someone who's not ready for it. Similar to LF look a leadoff on the other end. Another turn, turn result in a turnover for East Carolina. Holcomb Fay's going to think about it on the. ECU bench as Josh Graham, the freshman from Flemingsburg, Kentucky, steps up. Josh Graham, season high, 10. He got that at Ole Miss. Looking for his eighth, and he's got it tonight. 30 24 VCU. And I don't think someone has lost a contact lens. The needle in the haystack. Nice find. Black Welder was able to find it. He'll come out of the game in favor of Stephen Brand. Sure will they? Nope. Black Welder's going to stay in. Must be a disposable lens. <laughs> and for a shooter such as Black Welder, you would think that he'd want to go clean off that contact lens and pop it back in. You know, we haven't called his name yet. He's the leading scorer for their team. He doesn't start. Hadn't started the last few ball games, but he filled it up for 30 against George Mason about a week ago. So you know he's capable. Stroking for seven for nine from three-point land. 
Kenyatta Brown has not scored in this game. Gives to Hawkins. Hawkins at the high post. Sets a big screen. Gets it back. Brown back to punt. Drives in. Charging foul. Excellent help side defense that time by Stephen, by Stephen, uh, St uh, excuse me, by Sean Hampton, number 44, stepping over on the weak side, getting down low. Neil Punt thought he had an easy path to the basket, but Hampton set up strong. Good call by the officials. Taylor. Now Graham. Bounce inside Treadwell. Graham tweeted it by six. Hampton fighting for position, but Stephen Branch had him by the arm, and that's his first foul. Josh Graham, number two, is a freshman, but his confidence is growing as this game goes along. You mentioned a minute ago, Bob, his season high was 10, po is 10 points against Ole Miss. He has eight so far. He was looking for his move on that play. He was looking for his, uh, looking for his shot, and then he was able to throw it inside, and they were able to pick up a foul. But you can see he's eyeing the basket now, which is, which is great for a freshman to do. Taylor. Uh, travel before the shot. That is the 18th turnover for VCU. That's right at their season average. I mean, they average almost 18 per ball game. They're right at it already, but it's awfully early in the second half, so they're on pace to really go, go much higher than what they would expect to do. Blackwelder feeds inside. Little runner, no good by Branch. And Josh Graham brings it ahead. Over to Lamar Taylor. Quickly underneath the Treadwell. Blocked and fouled by Neil Punt. Man, Treadwell, the redshirt freshman, going to the free throw line. This is a young man who was redshirted a year ago out of Annapolis, Maryland. And the biggest... Uh, Accomplishment for Treadwell in that redshirt year, not only to get adapted to college basketball, but to put on some weight. He was as thin as a rail coming out of high school. They bulked him up, put 45 pounds on him. And I think it's safe to say, Charles, that as you watch college basketball, the big guys tend to come later. And, and Treadwell, he's got some nice offensive skills, hasn't been totally consistent this year, but he's got a bright future here in Richmond. Football news with your body. The little guys, they come in skills ready and they're ready to go. So it's a lot easier to teach them and coach them. You have to have a lot of patience with the bigger guys. And as you said, Treadwell, best accomplishment, adding 45 pounds. And he's still skinny. So there's a lot of frame left to put more weight and bulk on. You know, they're going to lock him in that weight room and just throw food into him this offseason also. He should eat what I eat. <laughs> put it on. <laughs> Let me tell you, if he ate what the two of us eat, they wouldn't have any worries about him. I noticed you sized up that Krispy Kreme on Broad Street. Coming <laughs> I knew you were going to give me up on that. Um, I'm, hoping, I'm hoping my people are not listening to that. And Treadwell nearly with a steal. 32-24 Rams. 17.05 to go second half. ECU gone cold to start this second half. Shot clock at 13. Brown out of the corner. 4-3. Big shot for Kenyatta Brown. His first field goal of the game. Pirates within five. And that's a guy who needed that shot to go down. Well, we had we spotlighted him at the top because of the potential that he brought to this ball game and didn't make any shots in the first half and really wanted to. He, he really attacked the glass a couple times early, didn't get it to go down. So that shot was big for him. Feeling it, Brown puts up another one. Missed this one. And the rebound to Matt Trudwell. Quick on the break to Jones. Nice catch in traffic. And he puts it in. And Jones is limping. He may have twisted an ankle. In fact, he's trying to guard on the baseline. And you can see he is wincing in pain. Up top, the shot no good by Taylor. And it is out of bounds. And you see Bo Jones down on his hands and knees in pain. Out. The Rams have a seven-point lead. East Carolina has scored but three points in this second half on Kenyatta Brown's shot. Hall lost the handle. 
Picked up by Lilly. Kicks to Hagen. Inside, Sean Hampton. And Graham the rebound. And may have had the foul to do it, and didn't take it out of bounds. It's going to be out of bounds to ECU. Sean Hampton established himself strong inside, but didn't stay strong on the move. Allowed himself to really be bumped off his move quite easily by Quincy Hall. He was looking for a call from the officials, none forthcoming. And it was just, just a turnover on the other end. And we've got a foul. It's on Sean Hampton of BC, his second. Neil Punt comes in for the Pirates. Last foul on Hampton, Bob, probably a little bit of frustration from not being able to complete his move on the other end. Probably got a little bit of a hand check down low. But you notice that Mac McCarthy is resting Lamar Taylor at this time, too, while Bo Jones is out with a seven-point lead. Let's see how long he can go getting him some rest. Blackwell to rims one out. Hampton had it swatted away, but picked up by Lilly. Quickly ahead for the dunk by Treadwell. A drive-by dunk for the redshirt freshman. And that brings the crowd into it. You know, they've been looking for a reason to really stand up and cheer. The game hasn't offered them that many exciting moments, but that was one of them. Nice line, drive-by dunk. I like that. I like that. Blackwelder inside the punt. That's rejected and a foul on Josh Graham. His first. We talked about Treadwell's skills, and he looked pretty good in the open court. And with Lamar Taylor on the bench, Scott Lilly assumes a point guard role, and he can find the open man, too. Matt Treadwell, the extra 45 pounds that he put on has not slowed him down from being able to run the floor. That's the second time this half that he's beaten the ECU defense down court and had a chance to make a play. And this one, he knocked it. East Carolina, not a particularly good foul shooting team. Of course, in college basketball, a lot of that depends on who shoots the free throws. <laughs> Punt is under 50% for the season. But East Carolina, near the bottom in the Colonial at 62%. Neil Punt got very glad for guys like Shaquille O'Neal, the other big guys who take the pressure off of him to shoot less than 50% from the free throw line. And now Scott Lilly. You know, I see Scott Lilly leaving the bench area now also. He might have an injury too. Scott Lilly exiting the building, and he's going to the locker room. Bo Jones flexing the knees at the end of the VCU bench. So Mac McCarthy with two pretty good players out of commission. There you see. Bo at the end of the bench for VCU. 36 28. 24 seconds to shoot for VCU. And Mac McCarthy was trying to give some, get, get some rest for Lamar Taylor. Had to be short lived because he had a couple of other injuries. And there's a Valdez Josis, a lot of people's pick for preseason player of the year in the Cornell Athletic Association. He's out for the season now with toward ACL. And he's left me. 15 seconds to shoot for BC. Lucis injured in practice yesterday. It happened late. Lou news did not uh, come out about the injury until the Pirates arrived here in Richmond this afternoon. But a tough blow for Bill Herring and the Pirates. And the really unfortunate part of it was it just happened during a regular drill. It didn't yes. happen with any kind of contact or anything. He just running down court and flaring out on a, on a fast break drill. And then Boy, he went on. Lamar Taylor, you talk about a big league crossover and drills the three. Would make Tim Hardaway proud with that crossover and then stepping up and knocking down the three. We talked about him being in a slump coming into this game. I think he's officially out of it now, Bob. Brandon Hawkins comes back with a neutralizing three. 31, 39, 31, BCU. Jack McCarthy calling a set from the bench. Loose on the wing, and it's out of bounds to ECU. Well, look at Taylor free himself with a crossover. Beautiful job. Froze him and actually got Brandon Hawkins to drop back inside, thinking he was going to the basket. Pulled up and hit the three. Yeah, Hawkins uh, dropped his transmission. 39-31 <laughs> BCU. Holcomb Bay jammed up, but the Pirates control. 13-08 remaining in the game. Nice drive, contact, and two free throws coming for David Taylor. 
That's really justice for David Taylor. The whole first half, we saw him going to the basket and getting the ball swatted away. He's really worked hard this whole ball game despite <laughs> those roadblocks he's encountered inside, and this time he gets to the free throw line. Taylor was our Ann Landers player of the game in the first half. Rejection after rejection. <laughs> Matt Treadwell back into the game for VCU. Reggie Acosta with two fouls goes out. He's upset about it. The foul is not coming out of the game. <laughs> Second shot for Taylor. No good. Tip no. Another shot. No inside. Van Ireland just can't get it to go. And a hell ball. The arrow favors ECU. Alphonse Van Ireland. The junior from the Netherlands had a couple at point black range. Neil Punt pulls him out of there as Tepper's flared a bit. And uh, Van Ireland's got to be careful of one thing about throwing elbows. Yeah. I think that's what Brian Kersey was warning him a moment ago. You throw an elbow, it's an ejection. It could be a flagrant foul when you're out of the game. So. And it was warned by Kersen. And it's nice to show that type of aggression. But I think that Coach Harrion and the rest of his team would like for Alphonse Van Erlen to show that kind of aggression in putting the ball towards the basket as opposed to just, you know, down on the floor and trying to yank it away from someone. And that doesn't prove a whole lot to anyone at that point. Prove it going up on the basket and on the glass, rebounding and blocking shots. Okafer dumps it low to punt. Makes his move in traffic and scores. Did a good job to keep that pivot foot on the ground. Keep the pivot foot and also maintain the basketball strong in his hands because he had a couple people slapping at it there. He kept it real strong, kept it up high when the little guys couldn't get, get their hands on it. Made a basket. Taylor. Inside. Hampton. Taken away. A travel on Sean Hampton. And as hard as he has worked tonight, he's really struggled on the offensive end, making his moves. Catching it, you know, catching the ball, being able to get done what he wants to. A couple of series ago, he was bumped off the block as he caught the ball going for a shot. This time he made the nice move with the pivot foot, but ended up dragging it and got called for a travel. 20 BCU turnovers. Outside, Morrison. His three rims out. Treadwell boards. Up to Lamar Taylor. Taylor with a dribble drive. Off the glass and good. Mac McCarthy, right now you just whispered to your assistant coaches, isn't it nice to have Lamar Taylor back? Because he's back all the way tonight, doing it all. You know, pumping up the threes, directing the club by, by running the offense, and also getting to the rim with the dribble. Punt inside, scores again. Neil Punt getting good position and going to work on the right block. 41-35 BCU. Nice backdoor cut. Hoggart, a blocking foul on ECU. Hunt with his third. And in a sense, a bailout call for, for, for them because Punt kept them from kept Hoggart from really being in trouble on that play. But look at Lamar Taylor getting to the basket with the dribble. The glass. 41-35. Here's Treadwell. And all the rebound. Pirates down six. Despite shooting 38% in the game. UCU shot under 40% in the first half, but well over 50 in the second. The turnovers have cost the Rams. Deep in the corner, Morrissey, no. And ball over the back. Ball with a second foul. Seventh team foul on East Carolina. The injury to VCU's Bo Jones was a right calf muscle. And he's back into the ball game now for VCU. That's good news. I had feared that was a knee. But Bo's not 100%, but he's back out there. Treadwell, free throw line. He has scored six tonight. Front end of a 1 1 is good. 
42-35 VCU. Gives it to VCU. One thing about the tall guys tonight, they have gone at each other from the opening buzzer. And you see three guys, you know, combined almost seven feet each on the floor fighting for the basketball, taking up a lot of floor getting after that ball. Lamar Taylor gets it in for VCU. Treadwell, turnaround, right hander, though. Tip up and in, good. I think it was Taylor. Taylor with 15, very impressive. Get, and getting them in a variety of ways. We talked about before, hitting the three, driving to the basket, and this time going to the offensive glass and getting a tip. Morrissey turns it over. Jones brings it up. He's not hurting with that ball in his hand. Crosses over, drives in, dishes, and VCU turns it over. You said that to me off air, Bobby. You know, it only hurts on defense, you know? <laughs> exactly. Doesn't hurt much when the ball's in your hands. Quincy Hall looks. Kenyatta Brown. And the rebound to Lika Litoff at BCU. 44-35 Rams. In. Too long, but a foul on Stephen Branch. It's a Treadwell with a little turnaround jump hook goes off the rim, and the littlest guy out there, Lamar Taylor, snuck in from the backside. Remember, but you still have to box people off. Doesn't matter who they are, and occasionally, if you're a guard, if you pick your spots right, you can surprise them and get to the basket. Lamar Taylor did for the two-pointer. The 6'10 junior from St. Petersburg, Russia. LF Likolito at the foul line. And he'll get the bonus throw. That's his third point today. He's averaging five rebounds, five points per game. A 44% free throw shooter. You see what he has done tonight. Both free throw is good. Bob Rath put Charles Davis at Altel Pavilion in Richmond, the East Carolina VCU CAA game from the state capital of the Commonwealth. Rams with an 11 point advantage. Punt in the paint, draws the foul on Licolito. And Neil Punt will go to the free throw line. Now with East Carolina down 11, I noticed Coach Bill Herring has changed his lineup a little. We haven't seen Travis Holcomb Fay in a while, and I think it's because he's not a big scorer. He moved Brandon Hawkins back to the point guard position and brought off the team's leading scorer coming in this game and the leading three-point shooter, Garrett Blackwell, their number 24 off the bench, so he has some better scores on the floor. Neil Punt in double figures for the 11th time this season. His high water mark, 22 in a game at Appalachian. And doesn't Buzz Peterson have a fine ball club up and boom? Doing a fine job there. He owns, owns a win over a name opponent such as Clemson out of the ACC, who they kicked pretty handily. There was a lane violation against VCU. Treadwell was in too soon. And that uh, victory by Appalachian was at Clemson. They went in the Little John and got a victory. Anytime you can go into an ACC school, being Appalachian State, and win, that's a huge win for your program. Taylor gives to Jones. VCU running up top. Look at Lito. Caught that one and laid it in. 48-36. This one's starting to get away from the Pirates. You notice the European flavor on that play for Lick leadoff. You know in the European rules, the alley-oop play is almost obsolete because you have to catch the ball below the rim. You can't catch it above the rim. You notice Lick leadoff didn't go up above the rim and take it and dunk it. He waited until it came down, grabbed it, and made a layup. Neil Punt keeps East Carolina afloat. He's got 16. Taylor, he can make a pass, but no, it's going to be a hell ball. And ECU will get it via the arrow. 
A free throw missed by Punt got it started. And on the free throw, Lamar Taylor stepping in front of the shooter and boxing him off. Something we don't, people don't do very much anymore. Very fundamentally sound. The pass up to lick a leadoff from Bo Jones. And again, waiting until it came down below the rim. It almost like, it almost like the, the European side of him came out, even though he's here in America playing the game. Rather than going up and dunking it, I'll catch it and lay it up just as I've been taught to do back home in Russia. 10-point lead, and again, Neil Punt going to work. He's got 18. Keeping hope alive for East Carolina. It's 48-40. And we're going to have a foul on VCU. It's on Likolitov, his third. And East Carolina will have it with 8.33 to play. put on more weight and get stronger, he won't have to do that anymore. You see him there, both arms wrapped around behind. <laughs> he almost encircled <laughs> Quincy Hall with his arms trying to move him out of the way. An excellent call by the official catching it there. But as I mentioned, when he gets bigger and stronger and is, and is able to set up real strong on the block, he won't have to do all that reaching behind him to push people off of him. A whopping 23 turnovers for the Rams. Hawkins for three. That is his fourth three-pointer of this game. He had three earlier at Fairfield. He's two away from his season high of 16. 48-43 VCU. Nice backdoor cut, Jones! He'll shoot. Pretty play by the Rams. And Bo Jones goes to the free throw line. It's almost that old style basketball that people talk about, lament about missing all the time. Just a nice sight recognition, seeing they had a chance to go back door, just made eye contact with the point guard. Good bounce pass for the entry. Bo Jones to the basket, missed the shot, but we picked up the foul and we'll shoot two. Bo Jones with his ninth point of this game. Changes for the Rams as Reggie Acosa and Sean Hampton come back. Treadwell and Lika Litoff to the bench. Jones is ready with the second free throw. And it's good. We've got a timeout on the floor. 7.41 to go. They are leading Vanderbilt 45-44 with 9.17 left in the second half. Kentucky and Athens tonight leading Georgia 43-37 at halftime. East Carolina trying to make a late run here in Richmond. On the cut, Blackwelder misses. by Lamar Taylor. And Sean, H Sean Hampton needs to take Lamar Taylor out to dinner for this assist. I and mean, this was pretty. Patience in the move, surveying the, the court. Josh Graham kicking it back out to the point guard. Looks like he's a set for three and then splits the two defenders, gets inside, delivers it to Hampton, who finally gets one to go on the inside. He's been frustrated a lot tonight getting the ball down low, but not this time, has a chance for a three-point play. 59% free throw shooter. This is this one, it's 52-43 Rams. As Brandon Hawkins, who has hit four threes tonight, plays it inside to Neil Punt. Neil's had a big second half. Hampton with the foul. Third on Sean. Punt has scored 10 second half points and has 18 for the game. He'll step up to the free throw line as the Rams are over the limit. One thing about Neil Punt, you know he got 
toughened up in the lane. You see Bill Herrian there surveying his team. But Frank got really toughened up in the lane, playing back at home with his brother Tom. Wind up going to Nebraska on a football scholarship as an all big eight lineman. Hate to see their wars in the backyard. 52, 43 Rams. Mark Taylor. Jones looks, fires for three, no good. David Taylor clears up to Brandon Hawkins. Pirates are down nine, they've got to come quickly. Jones lost the handle. Toss ahead to Josh Graham. He goes in and gets fouled. By Initiating the action and forcing the tempo on that play, forcing Neil Punt to make a decision. I think he got caught in between, Bob. Didn't know whether he needed to come in there and try and block the shot, set up and take the charge. And once he got caught in between, it sure looked like a foul to the official. Graham missing the first of two. A lot of changes for East Carolina. Punt, the biggest change, goes to the bench with those four personal fouls and 6.22 to play. And it's gonna be Josh Graham to shoot the second of two. Josh has scored eight tonight, three boards. And the freshman from Kentucky puts it home. That is point number nine, and VCU leads it by 10. Rams come with some pressure. And East Carolina's got no production tonight out of Garrett Blackwelder which is a guy, he's a guy that they need to score to, to stay in this ball game. If he's hitting his average, we're at a tie ball game back right now. And thus far, I don't believe he scored tonight, has he, Bob? He has not scratched and had only four Saturday against UNC Wilmington. And just a week ago, he had 30 against George Mason. So they need more consistent production out of Garrett Blackwelder. Pirates turn it over, Jones drives. And will shoot two. The foul on Garrett Blackwelder, his third. 5.55 left, and Bo Jones to the free throw line. And he came out of the last set and, and, and took it, so that's normal play for, for Virginia Commonwealth. And him getting to the free throw line, 95% free throw, sure you wouldn't have anyone else doing it. He's missed two free throws tonight. Now he's missed three. Must be me sitting here. I tend to jinx people like crazy. <laughs> Lob into Okosa. Fakes. Backdoor cutting, Graham lays it in. Great interior, interior passing by VCU. Excellent fundamentals by Reggie Acosta. The bounce pass is the best pass you can make on the interior. Themselves down by 12. They have shot 38% tonight. VCU is up to an even 50. Van Ireland. Nearly lost a dribble. Good dig down by Hampton to knock it free. Now he comes up with it at the other end. Carries it up and misses. East Carolina with it with Kenyatta Brown. Over to front, his lane, no. I get the rebound. Quickly to Scott Lilly. 55-43, three-pointer, Graham, no. Tip, no. And over the back is Sean Hampton. Alphonse Van Ireland, the last time he got the ball down low, Bob, what's the cardinal rule for a seven-footer? Don't put it on the floor. Don't put it on the floor. The little guys like us come and attack it and get it. He put it on the floor, and it was like the vultures going at a carcass. There are three guys came down low and, and swiped at it and got the ball free. He needs to learn to catch it, keep it up high where they can't get it to initiate his move. <laughs> to play. 55, 43, BCU. Treadwell. He'll shoot to Van Ireland with his third free throw line. He has gone to the line four times tonight and has scored three of his seven points of the strike. Coming into the game, he had only 12 free throw attempts all season. This one in and out. Neither team has particularly uh, distinguished itself at the foul line tonight. East Carolina is 2 of 9. VCU is 12 of 20. And that's not unusual for either team, unfortunately, for their coaches. I mean, but they come into the game, East Carolina 62% free throws, and Virginia Commonwealth 67. They're both near the bottom of the CAA in free throw shooting. 
56 43 Rams. The Morrison. Hawkins. Inside. Neil Punt. Turn, shoots, misses. A 13 point lead for VCU. Coming and going. Get your money's worth. <laughs> Treadwell. Second shot for the redshirt freshman out of Annapolis, Maryland. Prepped at St. Mary's Academy. Did you say coming into this game he'd only shot 12 free throws? 12, yes 12 sir. for the season and nearly seven feet tall. Usually that's a bad <laughs> ratio. You know, being that tall, you would expect them to get to the free throw line more often by being down low and initiating contact. 56-43. And Ireland, short, gets it back. Fakes, misses. And it's going to belong to VCU. Hunter Hockett with it. Gives it over to Scott Lilly with three and a half to go in the game. Casa. Needs some help, finds it. Shot clock becoming a factor at 15 seconds. Josh Graham backs it out, gives to Lilly. And the shot was seven on the clock. Reggie Ocosa putting it up. He's got four. 58 43, Rams by 15. Have to give Scott Lilly a lot of credit tonight, Bob. He's coming to this ball game and really helped the Lamar Taylor out, taking some minutes from him and giving Lamar Taylor a chance to rest him. And he's been on the floor. Virginia Commonwealth hasn't missed much of a beat with him at the point guard position. That last rotation was a good example of that, giving the shot for a person. Treadwell just couldn't get it to go. 2.40 left. This is the three. Hunt the rebound and follows. Here's Hampton on the wing to Lilly and back up front to Taylor. Lamar back in the ball game for the Rams. As Mac McCarthy wants to get his point guard back in to run the show for the final 208. The play of Lamar Taylor tonight. Very heady point guard, under control, made a lot of good decisions. Made a lot of really good decisions, and decisions that will look a lot better in the stat sheet as some of his teammates <laughs> pick up on the passes that he gives them. A few times tonight, he's given them excellent passes in positions for them to score, and they haven't been ready for the ball, or they haven't been able to finish. So as soon as they learn that, his stats will continue to go up. But right now, there's no reflection on, uh, sometimes it's not a good reflection on how he's played because it's not evident enough in the stat sheet. He's played an awfully good ball game tonight. Taylor with 16 points, eight rebounds, seven assists. That is a big league night. Rebound, follow, no tip, good! They're gonna give it, I believe, to uh, Hampton. 61-45. Deep in the corner, three, no good by Brian Fox. The follow is good by Brown. And a foul. And if he makes this shot, pretty obvious East Carolina will go into a press. They can handle the press, hit their free throws. They should be able to walk out of here with their 10th win at ninth at home. Good job breaking the pressure, getting a man in the middle. Lamar Taylor handling the ball well, getting the ball to the middle, and then they were able to bring it back out and start their offense in the half court. What they'll probably do now, Bob, is try and run some time off the clock and then go into an offensive set with about 10 seconds left on the shot clock. Jones. Deep out of the corner, Lilly connects. His first bucket of the game. Helps put it away for VCU, 63-48. Nice to see him rewarded with some points for all the other work that he's done today. And why that foul? I'm sure Mac McCarthy's going to ask that same question as he reviews film. Actually, I don't think he'll wait that long. I think he'll probably bring over <laughs> Reggie Acosa and ask him that question right now. Fouled him on a three, correct? And the shot went. So a four-point play opportunity for Kenyatta Brown. 
And Reggie is going to the bench. <laughs> and, and I noticed they're directing him down close to where Mac McCarthy is, just in case Coach McCarthy might have a few words to, uh, a few words for Mr. Acosta. So 10 for Kenyatta Brown. All in the second half to the line. His 17th point. Excellent ball game by him. I don't think we can emphasize that enough. There were a lot of concerns about him coming into the game. They talked about how Bo Jones needed some help, and Lamar Taylor's usually the guy to help him out, but the last four games haven't been as productive for him. But tonight, he put, he's put it all together. He's put he put together a stat line tonight, but they call it a stat stuffer. He did it tonight. He, he's filled it up in all areas. Hawkins gets the lay in, 65-52. Mark Taylor leading the league in assists, third in steals. And uh, recaptured the three-point stroke tonight. He'd been struggling in that department, but hit three tonight. He's had a terrific overall game. Six of 11 from the field. And a grand total of 20 points. His career high is 24. He's three away from that. 67-54. Land is good for Taylor. Trapped is Lilly. Can he get rid of it? Yes. Over to Taylor with a half a minute to go. Out of traffic to Treadwell. Now Lilly handles it, and the Rams are going to run out the final seconds. The shot clock just ahead of the game clock. BCU is up 11. They're going to win this basketball game in the Colonial tonight here in Richmond. And it comes BCU's Hoggett. Fires it at the end of the clock and misses. Punt the rebound. The ball out of bounds and belongs to VCU. East Carolina thought the game was over, but that shot did hit the rim. There was no shot clock violation. And I think the officials are saying that is indeed the ball game. That's the ball game. So VCU, Mac McCarthy takes the hand to Bill Harry and his Rams with the win tonight, 67 to 56. Our final score here at the Alltel Pavilion. Back after this.